this is Marta Bin Village from Pakistan and you are watching my YouTube channel Insani Ebehat which aims to invoke a little bit of humanity in all of us through awareness and understanding. Uh, so I actually uh, wanted to make a different vi video in regards to me fasting for the Yom Kippur which was yesterday and uh, the realization and the understanding that I got um, after reading the book of Jonah and all the, you know, high holiday, uh, you know, text and all that, you know, prayers and everything. Um, but I watched three videos. Um, one of the videos from the World Jewish Congregation, I think, of uh, the uh, president of WJC actually kind of triggered uh, this sort of uh, this video actually he uh, sort of uh, inspired me to actually make this video and of course Gigi Hadid's uh, tweet um, so and also since um, I had the sheer honor and privilege to listen to a live um, Yom Kippur service um, on this uh, great channel which is uh, a great um, synagogue also which telecast or broadcast live um, services for Shabbat and all and I can watch it because for me when um, Shabbat gets over or when my fast was over their service had started so I can watch it but it was actually a Yom Kippur service or, or a Shabbat service, but I can watch it because it's, for me it's Sunday and for me it was, you know, later night, night between Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, so anyway, so the, 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 the service actually included um, some personal experience of, the, um, of um, Theodore Harso, who was, who is considered uh, as the founding father of Zionism and the Zionist political movement, shall we say. Um, that when I listen to um, you know, statements like Free Palestine and uh, Palestine is from the river to the sea, first and foremost, which river are we talking about and which sea are we talking about? Because Mediterranean is a huge sea, and there are many rivers around the you know Middle Eastern and North African and European that that entire you know space. So we need to be specific. And um, there was a map shown in 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 that video in the uh, World JC in the WJC uh, short clip. Um, and of course I was angered as a uh, strong and passionate Zionist myself. I actually watched, you know, but, um, and then the tweet that Miss, Mrs., shall I say, uh, Hadid, I don't know, I haven't seen the pictures of she getting married to the, um, Zan Malik thing. So Mrs. Malik or Gigi Hadid saying it's not about religion and it's about greed i was like literally look who is talking about greed an arab origin half okay her, her half of her dna is arab palestinian so that she says so an arab woman and an arab half of the arab half of Half Arab woman is talking about greed and actually half Dutch. She's half Dutch and half uh, Arab. So these Arab, half of his DNA, which is Arab slash Palestinian, talks about greed when they have the entire continent, that is Middle East, the entire continent for themselves. Even they took their bullshit uh, to almost to Europe, Spain, they, you know, toxified with their Islamic and Arabic influence, but nobody talks about it because, you know, and then Dutch people, 
they call her nice. I mean, she should really read the Dutch history, Dutch colonialism per se, and Arab colonialism, and then talk about greed. She will know the definition of what greed is, first and foremost. And at least she should know that it's not about religion. That is statement can fuck with the entire West, especially the naive Jews or naive Jewish Israelis, the left. But this statement would definitely not work with Mahdrabin Baloch and Zan Malik because we are not only Muslims, but Pakistanis. So we know what's religious and what's not. Very good on because her bullshit will go on and we're just gonna ignore it and I would like to focus on the thing that when people sympathize with the Palestinian Arabs and talk about apartheid and injustice let's just remind the inj let's just remind ourselves that what a real injustice looks like and feels like there were Jews of different nationalities living in Europe as assimilated citizens who had nothing to do with their religion and they associated themselves more as Austrians, Germans, uh, British, French, Italian, Russian, but they were forced to recognize their religious entity or their religious identity and were reduced and stripped from their citizenship and their basic human rights to own properties, to own a life and have a decent, you know, identity and they were seen as Jews. If you observe mitzvot or not, if you're circumcised or not, if you have a Jewish father or a Jewish mother, any amount of DNA which is Jewish would make you Jew and that would piss off the non-Jew and then you will end up in a death, death camp and the whole world was actually stopped and washed. They went from one conference to another conference pledging people, government officials, that you know there are some injustices happening to us. We are forced to wear some uh, you know, stars and, and identify as not Germans, but rather Jude or Jews. And we have other separate laws and separate requirements to fulfill as people living in, in a certain country. And not just one country, ladies and gentlemen, almost all countries in the entire continent, which we call as Europe. And not just from Europe, by the way, of course. When it started in Europe, the Arab brothers and sisters said, if the Christians can do it, why can't we do the same to our brothers, the Jews? So the persecution also started, uh, you know, in Morocco, Tunisia, Algeria, mm, what else? Iraq, Iran. So all of them, the, the Sifra, the, oh, how can I forget, the occupied Spain, which persecuted the, the Jews in the name of dummy tax or whatever, whatever. Our greatest sage, Rambam, was forced to write in a foreign language, which is Arab, just because Arabs occupied or the Holy Land was under the occupation of the Arabs. Whether you're an Arab or an Ottoman, Turkish or whatever the hell you are, you, in your foreign language, have no right to say this to the indigenous people that they should provide freedom and equality to their people, which is Arab or Turkish or Ottoman or whatever, 
when they themselves didn't even provide decent human rights to the Jews when they occupied the whole land. Turkey should be ashamed or any of the Arab countries should be ashamed to talk about the rights for the Palestinian Arabs because when they were in power, they treated Jews as shit. Not only that, they forced them out to immigrate to Europe and every other single country on this planet just to be safe and alive. There is a limit to everything. And this lady talks about greed. The number of Arab countries in Middle East are 53 or 52. And there is only one Jewish state that is tiny little Jewish state in which Jewish state Gaza is governed by sovereign entity whatever that government is called. And the West Bank has areas in control with the Palestinian Authority. Where on the fucking earth any other country provides the minority this amount of freedom and equality. Not only that, electricity, employment, food supplies, everything is the responsibility of the evil Jews and the evil Zionists. You know, there, there is a limit to everything. First, the Europe and the entire world when we were trying, when the Jews were actually trying to fit in and make their lives in every country that they existed with whatever difficulties they had, all of a sudden they were rejoicing and they were getting rich and they were grateful to Hashem for, for the bounty that they provided. All of a sudden these non-Jews, how can, how can they, these Jews be satisfied living in our countries? And, and prosper, and prosper and, and educate themselves. How dare Einstein become a greatest scientist in physics? How dare he? He should know that he is a Jew and he shouldn't study and he should just be our slaves. This mentality has to go. A Jew being flourished and being empowered either in Eretz Israel or outside the Eretz Israel is not tolerable or is not something that a non-Jew can tolerate and accept. This mentality that these Arabs have of this Salahuddin or whatever the hell he was, that, you know, just like Rambam, he can, you know, treat every other Jew like Rambam. I'm sorry. Russia, at least Russian Jews are not like that. You know, the way they literally fucked the Uganda plan. I mean, literally, the guy said, I have to do a Teshua for attending this Zionist Congress and for, for addressing this, this, this issue of considering Uganda as, as a possible safe heaven or a country for, for the Jews. Why can't Jews have their country, their sovereignty in their ancestral home where they originated? If Turkey or Ottomans can have Turkey for themselves, Arabs can have Saudi Arabia and not just Saudi Arabia, bunch of other countries. Moroccans can have Morocco. Syrians can have Syria. Babylonians can have Iraq. And Persian can have Iran. Why can't Jews have is Arab sister? When it's part of not only our tradition, our story, our existence, but our religion. Okay, fine. It's not about religion for Gigi Hadid and Mr. Zain Malik, but it is definitely about religion for me, Major Bin Baloch. I don't know about any other Jew or any other Israeli. They can fuck themselves and think whatever the hell they want. At least I will think and stand like Theodore Herzl, a refined Theodore Herzl, which will not or never consider Uganda or any other country except Israel. The poor man got, and he, he literally died on a heart attack because of the guilt that he, you know, proposed Uganda as a possible solution. Literally, Palestinians get 
some help either from psychologist or political analyst or whatever the hell first and foremostly you give this tiny strip of a land to these jewish people and then you want to divide it with with the arabs why would why can't you five times bigger land is jordan why can't jordan be palestine palestinian state tell me a reason when Jordan was already part of Palestine and the Palestinian mandate the British mandate whatever that was why can't Jordan be Palestine it's a it, it's five times bigger land than Israel so i mean why can't palestinian just go there why because there is no al aqsa there well for your kind of information even al aqsa is controlled by the jordanian authority we're done i don't know about any other person but i would stand up for israel as long i live as long as i will live and this these three videos actually motivate my urge and my dream to go live in israel and make an aliyah and fight for its existence and sovereignty this 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 whole thing just does that it creates zero sympathy for these palestinian fake dramaists who just think that i don't know why they think that they are the victims i i have no idea when jews were getting persecuted and they were they were treated badly they were packing their bags and moving from one european country to another some of them went to get russia some went to the us and they are not moving they are the only people who are being persecuted in a place but they still insist to live in that place with those people coexist gg hadith co is coexist with your enemy with the people who consider you below human or you know apartheid you still insist on living with them seriously this this is beyond terribly below humanity i must say thank you